Hello students, I am Dr. Hitesh Karya. I will be teaching you biology and today we are going to learn a very very interesting chapter from biology that is chapter number 5, the fundamental unit of life. Dear students, let me tell you one thing that this particular chapter forms the foundation or the basis of the entire science of biology. Yes, my dear students, the entire science of biology completely is based on this particular topic that is the fundamental unit of life. So, let us see what this topic is all about. Students, just observe the following structures. We have a tower, we have some monuments, we also have some buildings, right? Now, these structures, they look very different from each other. That is, they differ in shape and also in size. But do they have any common properties? Yes, they definitely have a basic common property that is all these structures that you just saw are made up of bricks. So, we can say that bricks are the basic building blocks of these structures. Now, similarly, there are millions of living organisms on this earth. We have so many plants, animals and human beings around us. Now, these living organisms also differ in size and shape. They are so very different from each other. But here also, they all are made up of the same building blocks. And these building blocks of living organisms are called as cells. So, we say that cells are the building blocks of life. Now, let us go on to understand how do we define a cell. So, cell is the common basic structural and functional unit of living beings. The structure of living beings is made up of cell and the functions of living beings also occur in their cells. Now, let us go on to understand the discovery of cells, a very interesting concept, how were cells discovered. Students, in the year 1665, there was a scientist called as Robert Hooke. Now, Robert Hooke, what he did was, he observed a very thin slice of cork. Cork means a bark of a tree, the outer layer of a tree. He observed the thin slice of cork under a self-designed microscope because by that time microscopes were not invented. So, he just made a self-designed microscope and he observed the slice of cork under this microscope and when he observed, he saw that there were empty compartments and these empty compartments resembled the structure of honeycomb. You can make out, right? And that is why he labeled them as cells because in Latin, cells means small rooms. So, this is how cells were discovered. Going further, we know that living organisms basically are of two types that is unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular organisms are those which are made up of a single cell whereas multicellular organisms are made up of many cells. Now, students, in unicellular organisms, all the functions are carried out by the single cell because that body is itself made up of one cell. Whereas in multicellular organisms, there are many cells which group together in a single body and they assume different functions in it to form the various body parts. Now, in case of unicellular organisms, we have examples like Chlamydomonas, then we have Paramecium and Bacteria. So, these are unicellular organisms. Whereas, in case of multicellular organisms, we have some of the fungi, plants and animals including human beings. These are multicellular organisms. Now, going further, let us try to understand cell theory. Now, what is cell theory? 
different scientists they proposed different theories regarding the study of cells which we call it as cell theory let us try to understand the different theories the first theory was proposed by m j schleden and theodore schwann in the year 1838 and 39 they proposed that all plants and animals are composed of cells and cell is the basic unit of life so this theory was given by m j schleden and theodore schwann that all plants and animals are composed of cells and cell is the basic unit of life later in the year 1885 mr r verchow modified this theory by suggesting that all cells arise from pre existing cells only when a pre existing cell is present from that cell a new cell can arise so all cells arise from pre existing cells then with the discovery of electron microscope in the year 1940 it was easy to understand the complex structure of a cell 